come to town. But it's not just good times and rock and roll. There's the women and the late night parties as well. This is the team who produced the Radio 1 breakfast show every morning for an audience of 8 million people. It was only on rare occasions that they ever expected to meet their listeners. The Radio 1 roadshow was one of those rare occasions. Over the last 20 years, it's become an institution. And last summer, it enabled these six people to tour the southwest coast of Great Britain for a week and perform in front of tens of thousands of fans. But they weren't the first, and they certainly won't be the last. Here we go, off to Western Superman. Let's go, go! Bye. Thanks for coming, man. See you later. Hope you had a nice time. Hope it was worth it. People think that the roadshow started in 1975, but it actually started on 26th of July. 1973 in North Fistal Beach, Nuku, and the DJ there was Alan Freeman. Well, it all started when I got a phone call at home from Johnny Beerling, who was then a senior producer for Radio 1, and uh, he said, I've had an idea, and I said, yes, what? He said, I'm going to inaugurate a Radio 1 road show, and we're going to take it right round the country. Uh, and so what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to get a great big caravan, he said, well, we can pull the front down a platform, put some turntables on it and some tape machines. And he said, we have producers down there and we're going to join in the fun with the punters. We'll get them up on stage, make them sing, tell jokes, do anything like that. I said, I think you are wasting your time. He said, well, perhaps I am. But he said, we're going to do it. And I've got some further news for you. You're doing the first one. The roadshow started when uh, Johnny Beeling went to Monte Carlo for his holidays and he saw Radio Monte Carlo turn up in a caravan, let the side down with a little stage and do a show. So I came back thinking this wouldn't be a bad promotional idea for Radio 1. How could we get something like this on the beaches of the UK? Yeah, well, Johnny Beeling claims that he invented it. I claim that I invented it. Um, and every, every disc jockey claims that they did the first one. The truth of the matter is that we're all so damn old now, none of us can remember. <laughs> I think it was Brian Patton from Bristol said, there's a couple of guys in Bristol who do barbecues and put bands on, called the Miles Brothers. So I went to see John, and he said, a bit of a Bristol boy, John, here he said, I ain't got that vehicle no more, he said, but I'll build you one. Tell me what you want. So literally, we sat in his front room and drew something on a, almost on a cigarette packet. Well, the first meeting, Johnny Bearding came down to see my brother and uh, said he had this idea, but he only wanted to build a 10-foot big trailer. Now, John and myself thought, Miles is, we don't build anything small. So we said, let's build it 18-foot bigger, nearly twice the size. And that's what happened. And uh, we were breaking new territory because we didn't know what the hell we were doing. See ya! See ya! I can remember my boss, Derek Chinnery, who was the controller of Radio 1, being terribly sceptical about all this. He said, I hope you realise what you've done. You've committed these Miles brothers into building this caravan. You'll get all the drunks and the mods and the rockers rioting on the beach, and, you know, and it'll probably rain and nobody will turn up, and uh, I hope you know what you've done. On Thursday, a beautiful, beautiful day. The road show's moved on from Butte, and we are in a delightful place. We're at New Key, we're on the beach. The first road show I remember was 1981. It was Mike Reed, and I nearly lost my job because of it. Two, three, four. Mike Reed, Mike Reed, two, seven, five, and two, eight, five. Mike Reed, Mike Reed, National Radio One. Why? Well, I skived off work that particular day just to go to the road show. 
and I uh, fully enjoyed it. I asked him if if it was possible to become a DJ and he just said don't bother because the money's not very good. Hi, down the road show from 10 B. Here we are and uh, we've got a couple of requests to read out and I think I'm going to enjoy this more than anybody. because Going young back to uh, seeing Ed Stewart Stewart um, as a kid at uh, a Radio 1 kind of gathering and thinking, oh yeah, yeah met, met, met the Radio 1 DJ. When they left, there's two things I noticed. Uh, all these uh, showbiz people got in very fancy cars and there were a lot of birds hanging about them. And I thought to myself, there's something in this showbiz. <laughs> Can you please play a request for, I hope my wife isn't watching, for Jan and Alex, Jim and Les, John and Paula and everybody from Bristol, is that right? Coventry. Oh, Coventry, sorry, I thought it must be Bristol, pardon? Come and dad, so I couldn't fit them in. I'm... You couldn't fit them in, I'm not surprised you got enough there, haven't you? <laughs> Being on tour was great fun because you would go through the rigours of making sure that the show went out and went properly. And then you would hop into your cars or your wagons and you would race for an next venue, which could be 200, 300 miles away. This is the bedroom of the bus. Right, Jamie? Oh, that's where you would normally are, this isn't bus, it, Dad? Which was, designed for, <laughs> which was designed for the Magnificent Seven has now got us three on it. Young Justin, young you. Jamie and me, an old bloke dead. rest on the bus. This is, a, this is the bed, right? But this bus is quite similar to a, to, um, a helicopter. I mean, you know, it's obviously it's as fast as a helicopter. You can't stand up in it, and it makes you feel sick when it moves around. So, you know, we're doing all right. And it gets you there in five hours flat. And we arrived late at night, and of course, into the hotel and into the bar, all right, where we drank mercilessly until about three in the morning. Then we go to the and then we'd come out and have to set the whole thing up again. And the show would take place. And it would all great fun, as, as Chris Evans found out. Hello, Red Terror. How are you all right? Oh, 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 somebody's been in here, haven't they? I just... Um... It's a wrong room. Aha. Oh, look at that. Oh. This is nice, isn't it? The roadshow goes into town. Everybody knows about it. Everybody gets really excited. And there's an incredible atmosphere just buzzing around the whole town. Once the wagons just start rolling in and they see all these trucks all painted up, then most people seem to get really excited and, and you know, for 24 hours that town is buzzing. You know, it's a kind of little tiny seaside town and on the front there you'll have these massive trucks banging out these kind of, you know, massive hits. And every kid goes because there's nothing else to do. I mean, if you're very young, if you're like 10, 11, you're mad excited and you go. And if you're you know, a 15 or 17 year old lad, you'll go anyway, because all the girls are down there and there's nothing else to do. I'm mad about music and I am actually a mobile disc jockey myself. And um, this is just the perfect holiday for me, really. Uh, just enjoying the music and enjoying the atmosphere that you get at every single one of these road shows. We've got these girls called the Five Birds on tour, and actually there are only four in these photographs, but uh, that's because one of them was taking the photographs. But they go on tour all, all over the world, and they just send us photographs, and these, they just do these photographs for us to cheer us up in the morning. And uh, I'll just, uh, well, well, there they are. <laughs> this is in, in the privacy of their own home, taking these photographs purely to send in. They send us a new set of photographs every single week. And that's Claire there. Mm. That's Claire there. Nice curtains. Yeah, lovely curtains. It's a beautiful day. Jamie, Thank you. you got to see you? No, I don't mind. <laughs> I had to give it to Justin because I like his cry. I've never heard such anything. I have, Justin. Have you got a CD? Uh, I've got a beautiful CD. Oh, good. Well, let's go and, let's go and enjoy our rooms then. 